Hello, this is Marcel and in this video we will learn how to create non-liquid particles like sand and gases using Lucid Physics for 3ds Max. Let me just open up a sample scene which is available for download on our website. This scene simulates a magma flow. We have a ball or a sphere here which has a Lucid Physics preset applied to it and this preset basically makes it act like a very thick fluid. This fluid will go down this little simulated raven here which is basically a plane with a bunch of modifiers like noise and displacement applied to it. So I'm just going to increase the time range a little bit and then I'm going to press simulate and see what's going to happen with the settings that we currently have. This scene is very large scale so this whole plane here is probably around 5000 units long so our simulation will be significantly slower than normal because we're not dealing with smaller scales here. So if I just play back the scene you can see that our sphere is rolling down the hill as if it was magma which is exactly the effect that we're looking for and of course I can speed this up manually by the simulation back by just scrubbing the timeline. So one of the new parameters that we have in Lucid is the ability to turn off fluid constraints. It will prevent the particles from sticking to each other and creating these little clumps that simulate liquid. This will allow us to create more interesting effects like sand which also require a lot of particles but they behave differently than a fluid would. So I will just flick off this fluid constraints option and I'm going to increase my time range a little bit more and just so that we catch our particles when they get to the bottom I'm also going to use this little sandbox collision button which is the rightmost option on the Lucid toolbar and once you click it you can see that it adds our global scene sandbox here. In fact our scene was so big that the sandbox almost entirely contained the whole scene inside of it. So I'm just going to increase the size of the sandbox a little bit and it is about 10,000 units in all directions. I'm going to make it slightly longer and I'm also going to bring it up a little bit just so that when we have our particles falling on the ground it will catch them as they fall. I will also increase the timeline a little bit more just so that we have enough time for the particles to go all the way down and maybe about a thousand frames should do it. So I'll re-simulate the scene and as you see at the moment we only have 61,000 particles. I will try to increase this count a little bit more in the future but one of the beauties of Lucid is that you can sort of use this low count as a preview and you can see the simulation is happening quite interactively. If you want to really increase this amount of particles you can do this later on and the behavior will not change. So the recording is done and again if I play back my scene interactively just by using the playback option you see that our simulation is quite large and these particles are coming down pretty slow. And the important thing to distinguish here is that these particles are no longer fluid. So this means that they are more independent of each other and they resemble kind of maybe wet sand a little bit more than they would fluid. Now that we have this property available, I'm just going to show you how this looks if you play this back pretty quickly. And in fact, if we play this back much faster, it does look a lot more like fine sand or something else on a really slippery surface. So now that we have this property of fluid constraints turned off, we can go into our global flex settings and change some more parameters that can make this effect a little bit more interesting and maybe can allow you to simulate more granular particles. So one of the things that we can do is change both the dynamic and the static friction and what this will do is make these particles rub against geometry plane and our sandbox object a little bit more so they're not going to be rolling down as easily. Let me change this from 0.1 to a higher value and for particle friction we can also bump up this amount from 0.1 to a higher value to make the particles rub between each other a little bit more. There is some cohesion at the moment and we can turn this off and change some other properties like decreasing the drug coefficient. And now that we have changed this, let me just re-simulate the scene and see what kind of effect we have on the behavior of our particles. Notice how because we increased both the dynamic and the static friction, if I play the scene back now, the particles are actually being very sticky and they're making their way down a lot slower than in all the previous simulations. So this is just one more tool that you have to add some more realism for your particles. And as promised now I will just bump up the number of particles inside the simulation and let's see what kind of effect we get if the simulation is a lot more detailed and granular. So I'm going to start simulating and you see that instead of having just 80,000 particles now we have 475,000. And I'm just going to turn off my adaptive degradation inside the scene and now you see that the particles are still behaving 
behaving the same way as they were before but the detail is much finer and we get more realistic interesting and perhaps more production friendly and production ready results so the next non-liquid simulation that i wanted to show it would be simulating something like air or a gas i have loaded another scene which is also available on the lucid samples page and right now we just basically have two spheres one of them is a solid object which is simulated using a rigid body type and the second object here is a fluid object which has the fluid constraint that we have disabled in the previous use case if i just simulate this right now we don't really need to record this anymore because this is relatively small animation was only 36,000 particles so i can just press play and we can see that our red box is hitting our blue box which is being simulated as a fluid or maybe even something more like mud or other viscous surface so what i will do is exit my simulation go into the global flex properties to change some of the settings that make this blue box behave like mud first thing i will do is get rid of any cohesion and viscosity parameters and i will also remove the buoyancy parameter value of zero will just make it neutral which means it's not going to react to gravity and stay just in one place and i will play my animation interactively the effect that we have from this particle is now a lot more like gas or something that does not look like fluid anymore and now that we have this base effect we can go ahead and play with some of these parameters like again the dynamic and static friction to create some different effects how these particles interact with the world so i can change the friction a little bit and one other important parameter to note for simulating gases is this damping property over here because if it's set to zero the particles will just sort of fly away let me show you so if i have this at zero and they simulate the particles will continue moving and will never stop which kind of is not very realistic if you're simulating a gas because a gas would naturally be stopped by outside air and due to this friction it does not get very far so by changing this damping parameter and maybe also adding a little bit of drag let's add a value like 0.4 we can really make the particles behave more like a gas rather than something fluid or viscous once again i'm just going to go into my flex settings and increase the number of particles inside the scene just to see what kind of effect we have if we have much more detail in our simulation i'm going to change this from 20 to 40 and re-simulate my scene and this is what we get at the end of this simulation so the basic thing to remember for simulating something more like gas or a cloud as opposed to a fluid is to still have the fluid constraint on but this time try to reduce the buoyancy or maybe set it to zero and also add some drag and damping into your simulation if you want your gas to feel a little thicker and be stopped by your surface you can also change the dynamic and static friction just as we did when simulating the sand i hope these effects will come handy in your day-to-day -day usage of lucid physics for 3ds max thank you very much for watching this tutorial